The Square Ball Podcast. The show is brought to you by Levi Solicitors. 10% off your legal fees at levisolicitors.co.uk forward slash the square ball. 15% on conveyancing instructions. The discount until the end of September 2021. So if you want to get on that, get on it in the next day or two. Dan Michael and Moscow here to do Heroes and Villains now. Part three of the show. Who's done good and who's done bad by us across the last seven days in the world of football? Right, let's do, first of all, the Ken Bates Villain of the Week Award. Uh, we throw this open as well to our TSB Plus subscribers who let us know who they think their heroes and villains are. I mean, top of the list here. Antonio's got an absolute load, hasn't he? Adrian, Daniel, Johnny, Katie, Marco, uh, Jack, Adsham, Morpheus denied. Interesting name. Ryan, Liam, Ben and Craig, among many, many others, nominating him for that, uh, that elbow and trying to hurt our young French goalkeeper's face. And for scoring the winner. That can't be underrated. He might have got away with the elbow. Um, there may have been less of a landslide of opprobrium towards him if he just stopped. But he went and scored the winner as well, so you can't have both. <laughs> it's, it's a choice. You either punch Melier out or score the winner, not both. Yeah, I feel a bit... Um... I feel a bit of an affinity to Antonio for some reason. I don't know. I've always quite liked him. <laughs> until, same, until same physique. Now. Very similar, yeah. yeah. Very similar. You, we tend to go to the gym. I spot him sometimes when, yeah. he's, um, when, right. he's, when he's bench pressing. But I, don't, I feel like I've... I've have, you got, have you got that to that point now where there's kind of... You don't speak really, but there's a knowing... You know, you know that you recognise one another. You're like, all right, mate. Just well, the game knows game and all yeah, that, yeah, as they yeah, say. Yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah, I don't know. He's played for Sheffield Wednesday and Reading and Nottingham Forest. And I think to have come through that, and now be a good Premier League striker. He's a survivor, isn't he? I think that's to his credit because yeah. he's they're, they're absolute shit shows are all of those. And he's um, did he really used to be like a left back or something? He used to be a full, but he used to be a right back, didn't he? And then well, he was a winger for a bit, and then I think they just found himself. Was it Moyes who stuck him up front? Do we have to give Moyes some credit? It's the last um, couple of seasons, isn't it? Yeah, it's well, Moyes uh, played himself on the wing at the weekend. It does. Um, I likened him in my match report on the blog to Paul Warhurst when he was playing for. Sheffield Wednesday as a centre back and they put him up front and he scored so many goals he got called up for England as a striker and then um, got into an argument with Trevor Francis where he was saying what did he say and what well, did Trevor Francis say uh, Trevor was trying to put him back into defence but he well, was now uh, he was now saying he's a striker uh, so uh, Trevor uh, but what did he say listen you're a centre back you need to move move go, go to your end of the pitch this is my was going goals yeah. and of course after this initial burst of excitement he then played you know, about 30 games as a striker and couldn't score for Toffee. It all just went and he ended up in midfield at Blackburn. And I do, I sometimes wonder, or I was wondering in match report whether Antonio, it'll all just stop one day. And he'll end up playing defensive midfield for Blackburn? Yes. Fine. But at the moment, yeah, he's, um, he's pretty good at the old scoring goals thing. So, um, so the, that, that can't stand. <laughs> <laughs> Villain right away. I don't care if you see yourself in him or what then it's uh he's a villain in my eyes well friend kevin friend has probably slipstreamed antonio for the greatest weight of nominations there's a lot here matt sazzy aiden james katie paul graham ryan uh phil and moscow's west stand friend ralph uh chris james dave elliot all laying the boot in refs friend friend and refs and some of the language being used here yeah, we just can't say these words out loud, can we? I mean, Katie's done a bleep, bleep, mm. and a bleep, and a, another one there. Yeah, there's very. I think we can say the <laughs> and the, but beyond that, it's um, it's not to be uh, discussed. I mean, the the good refs are the ones that you don't notice, aren't they? And unfortunately, Kevin Friend put himself front and center in a lot of that, and and Ryan from Australia is the one who picks it out. It says it was just stop start borderline OCD on the throw-ins. The throw-ins were weird. Yeah. There were, so, so many foul throws, weren't there? They were really... Well, just the fact that he seemed really picky about where they were taken yeah. from. And not not always consistently either. Like, sometimes he was happy to give or take 10, 20 hours, as most refs are. But then other times he was very precise. He was like, no, it needs to be that exact. Keep going. Another foot. That's about right, as and, long as you don't move again. Do you think a lot of that is kind of... It's that's like performative, demonstrative to try and show people that he's in charge of the game and he won't stand. He's for got any, a whistle. Any shit? Well, what yeah. What does he need? Well, he, could, he, might in, have, he might have whistled and pointed. I'm in charge of this little bit of the game that no one gives a toss yeah. about. Yeah, I, would, was, I can I can do this though. That was it. He did whistle and point on the throwings, and that was the thing. Is like sometimes you get a referee with a whistle and it will go through you, and I really felt like kind of shivering in my bones whenever he was whistling about throwing. 
Although, like although there him. were times though when they were trying to take the mick with rolling, you know, free kicks where they do that thing where they spin the ball in front of themselves and give themselves an extra few yards, and they were at that a little bit, trying to gain sneaky yards, and he kept moving them back, and I was grateful for that, but I don't want to acknowledge it because he annoyed <laughs> me. So good for doing those bits, but let's not focus on it. But let's not focus on it. Yeah, and the uh, whole you know incident with um, Antonio and the um, the elbow, whether it was whether it was a red card or not, the whole incident could probably have been handled better and briefer without the whole wandering around chatting with everybody and um, going to look at the exact quantity of blood on the tissue and all this stuff that he needed to decide a yellow card. Just give the free kick and book him. Move on. Um, Phil and Moscow's West Stand friend Ralph did pick out one particular uh, incident or a couple of incidents just to highlight the annoyance with friend. Gave Rafinha a yellow card for his celebration but did nothing when West Ham's players go into their fans. And I think, is this true that Ben Rama started manhandling stewards? Yeah, there was a lot going on. I wouldn't say for definite that Ben Rama was doing that because I didn't see it, so I can't say exactly. But West Ham fans ran on, stewards tackled them, and then West Ham players started kind of, because the, the fan was on the floor and trying to get up and they were sort of getting involved in it. Um, and I couldn't work out if they were trying to stop the fan from being taken away but it seemed I mean the interesting thing to compare it with the Rafinha one is what's the ultimate sort of target of booking players for that what are you trying to stop them from doing you're trying to stop them from is it COVID pro protocols no says so it's going into the crowd I think uh, uh, Graham Smith checked that with the Premier League so it's not COVID related you he didn't just... go into the crowds though it was this side of the barriers wasn't he, he just stood there well but that's so that's the point with the West Ham fans but he encouraged the fans to come and um, embrace him and come over the barriers themselves got a, they got a megaphone and he said come on the pitch get over so here lads so it's all um, a certain amount of but that's what it comes down to and what my point was is kind of what are you trying to stop you're trying to stop fans from um, falling over each other over the seats in a dangerous situation and piling onto the pitch and creating a little bit of a public order problem that the stewards have to sort out. And I think the West Ham players were just as guilty of that, if not more, when they're getting involved with stewards who are trying to get fans off the pitch. I don't have a particular problem with anything I saw the West Ham uh, players doing and I don't think that a couple of fans running onto the pitch and celebrating is necessarily the biggest one. I think somebody what tried to run and have a go at Jack Harrison in the, the midst of it all. So that's why there's a, it's not desirable for people to be running out of the crowd onto the pitch. But I've seen um, worse things happen. But if it was, you're be, it seemed it seemed generally fairly good natured running onto the pitch. It was yeah. it was celebrating. It, it wasn't it wasn't Aaron Carley, was it? No, exactly. It was. Um, yeah, shouldn't obviously happen. But, but it's going to have those inevitable results if Stewart starts fighting with him. It took ages to kind of sort it out and calm it down and get the game going again. So that's why it's... Well, um, Ken Bates will be at home in Monaco uh, muttering electric fences. Uh, uh, ben, Frey, ben Fry rattling his bell up in York. Going, Keep off the pit. <laughs> um, in truth, that's probably why Fren didn't book anyone because it was already complicated enough. He that, just saw a load of chaos and went, ah, I'll let... It looks like stewards and police and stuff are involved in this. It's not it. for me. And who do you book... As well, which player do you book? Because it was easy West with Rafinha. And then if it was um, going to be Antonio for the winner, then it's a red card. So it becomes a big deal from that point of view. And that's why Rafinha's yellow should be rescinded. Mm, I've got a feeling we're getting caught up on a fairly minor detail here. But that is the real quiz, isn't it? Is the, why weren't there more sendings off? <laughs> Never mind that we lost. Anyway, uh, Moscow, well put that. Apart from uh, you are now nominated by Ding for your optimism uh, which we've dealt with on the other show didn't we say it's pra it's not it's just realism it's realism Moscow insists I don't believe him but that's what he says uh, he says it's not his cup of tea quite simply um, and he has a little it, swipe as well so he doesn't see what he doesn't see what you see maybe if I watch the game on a little TV it would look different well isn't it one of the joys of human experience that we all think differently and have different opinions and I welcome Twitter reinforces that yes yeah that I you know, I I never I hope give the impression that anybody has to think what I think because even I don't really particularly care about my own opinions <laughs> to that. So I, I'm interested in ideas and and communicating um, things as I see them. I'm not the only person who. Let's go back to rest. Uh, yeah. I'm just looking further down the list, and Mike Dean gets a nomination from former Leeds United striker Wayne Andrews, who says uh, Mike Dean was actually able to give a penalty when it was for scum. 
Um, again, I actually say, I've seen the actual penalty. I haven't seen the award of it. No, nor, nor have I. But um, I, I've every reason to believe it was it was wrong. Oh, we've got some turncoat bastards. Look, Bielsa's getting nominations now. It's starting to happen. Leeds fans, Pff, honestly. Um, should we even name them? <laughs> Shame. Let's. Um, well, I mean, uh, Gillian wants us to discuss the substitutions, which didn't work but we don't know about the I mean, injury Rafinha, situation Rafinha was injured wasn't he yeah. so I guess you, you've got to let him off on that one the thing there is knowing Rafinha was injured should he have left James on and then he could have brought on Jack Harrison for Rafinha and we didn't have to mess around with wingers and stuff so there's oh you could just put Tyler Roberts on the wingers equally as effective Moscow <laughs> no, let's, well, let's, let's, let's not let's, no, you, don't, you don't need to we, defend, we spend too long you don't doing need to it. defend Tyler Roberts anymore I think it all came out to the same result in the end anyway Dan I think Dan James after the week he'd had playing at Newcastle having a baby getting in a helicopter playing at Fulham coming back playing the game it probably got and he wasn't any good in the first half I don't think he wasn't terrible but there was when I was um, working out for my match report I was trying to find because there was a period of five minutes when I was sure that Ben Rama didn't touch the ball and as it turned out that was correct but during the same period Dan James didn't touch the ball either and they were the only two players on the pitch who didn't have a touch in that period and you can't really go five minutes without even having a touch and say well played I think it just got to half time and Dan James has said I would really just like a nap mm. and under that situation right Jackie you've had COVID but you came even and Harrison's uh, tweet um, either the, on the night or the next day was um, that it was his first day out of quarantine so he not really had the chance to train but we put him back in and maybe at that point Rafinha is in the, the tra- changing room saying I feel like a king I've scored a goal everything's great I'm going to go out there and I'm going to win this match for Leeds United and it will be great and I wonder if what uh... so just for the purpose of the video here Moscow just swallowed a fur ball but we, we didn't need to see that so we've edited it out do continue I wonder if what changed his mind was matches clicks miss because as distraught as click looked about what he did there it was little compared to the fury that you could see on Rafinha's face where there was a, an element of why do I hang around with these doofuses my hip hurts get me off this pitch so hey, some body parts have been nominated by the way Junior Firpo's arse uh, mm. has been nominated we've also uh, had for four, the deflection we should clarify yeah, not for anything else that it did for sure's thigh got a nomination in among all this uh, lactic acid which does build up in muscles got a, a nomination for us looking leggy in the last 10 minutes and Rafinha's the... hip that we it would be good if that was fully recovered because we can't be having him playing an hour and uh, limping off like Steptoe's horse I did enjoy this by the way uh, David Moyes got some nominations uh, it was uh, Mez Andrew Matthew and Graham Turville uh, picks him out for always been out of his techno area <laughs> which I think uh I imagine yes. just throwing a few shapes down. The- no limits. On the- um, too unlimited. We're having a, a problem with him. Yeah, and I didn't like him coming on the pitch, even if it's just to kick a ball back. Stay out of it. Uh, our negative fans and our positive fans have both been nominated. <laughs> so we're just in an unwinnable situation at the minute. Radrazani's been nominated. I was talking about his uh, incredibly thin skin uh, earlier on. Yeah, I mean, the, one of the people who has nominated, one of the three who've nominated... Radrazani. Um, one goes by the name of Angus K, apparently, okay. which I think is someone causing mischief on the feedback form. If, it, if it's not, if it's really you, Brad, yeah. put your fucking phone away, you tool. Is what it says. Which I, I don't, that don't think is from the, the words of our um, of, of Leeds United, Angus Kinnear. But yeah, it was it. Yeah, Nathan sums it up right, saying by no means does uh, his nomination tarnish his admiration for what he's done over the last few years, but the tweeting doesn't sit right with him. Yeah, absolutely. Just it's always been an interesting the way uh, Wisconsin Todd puts it, where he says. He needs to subscribe to the notion that wolves don't care about the opinions of sheep when it comes to social media. Because it was wolves he was tweeting at um, when they beat us 3 0. And uh, towards the end of the game, he started going, we need, The Football League needs to know this is very unfair and wolves are cheating. So it's kind of. Um, Do you know what? I actually didn't mind that as much because that was highlighting a, a larger structural issue with the the way the rules were. He and... needed to not do it while we were 3 0 down in the second half, though, didn't he? It seemed yeah. very. And I think that's um, that's why I'm kind of uh, a little bit oblivious sometimes to um, to him tweeting is just because I get now that this is what he's like, and it's yeah. uh, and there are there are worse traits there are worse traits than stupid tweets, mm. but when that's your um, prime 
sort of channel of communication. Um, just stick to the stuff about helping the Afghan women's team that he wants to bring to Yorkshire and house. Just do that. Mind and you, given the current phone, given the current climate, <laughs> it'll be a, it'll be a beautiful gesture and very helpful. And I hope it uh, works out for everybody involved much better than arguing about like reserve midfielders on Twitter pointlessly. Yes, there are uh, man marking gets a nomination. There's a particular family in the West End who kept standing <laughs> up, who Jerry was annoyed about. But it feels niche. We're not going to do that. Somebody uh, wants. This to is nom- when people are getting pissed off <laughs> with the world, isn't it? And they can sit down as well. Yeah, that person in front of me. How dare you go for a piss after 40 minutes? So, um, the Ellen Road PA control person, Andy, has got a gripe. Asks, why does Marching On Together start from the beginning now? I think that's the good place to start a song. I don't know about you. Um, yeah, but you, I mean, you were a DJ. You would mix it up but halfway through. Yeah, I mean, you? like on, on the radio. Bring it in for the chorus. Where's the drop? Well, on the radio, you do that cool thing of talking up to the to the vocals, don't you? So you don't crash the vocals, but you can't really do that because it's got it starts so um, so prominently with the you know the, the I don't even know what instrument it is, but um, the da, 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 you, you want to hear that, don't but you? But as Andy is pointing out, it has always previously played from just before the first chorus, so that there is enough time for the song to play to the end, and now it's fizzling out and because the, the Premier League uh, anthem, Premier League anthem comes over the top. Thing. So if they go back to uh, yeah, it's not a bad idea to work out when it needs to stop. Do you know that's called in radio? Start in radio, it's called back timing. Well, there you go. They need to just back back time it. it. Yeah, but everybody loves back time. Yeah, so do that. All right. Um, let's pick a villain of the week. Then is it Antonio? Antonio? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But he did. I mean, he did cause us most misery. He, we think he should have been sent off, even though probably not. But he and Melier the, doesn't deserve that. He scored the winner, and yeah. Melier got booked needlessly like i don't think melier should have been booked for saying to kevin friend they've just tried to do it to me again mm. well why are you gonna why aren't you giving me a free kick for that? do something about this no oh, i'll give you a yellow card they mm-hmm. obviously did target him to an extent didn't they unless i mean they might just target all goalkeepers it might not, not be anything particular against melier but i don't look like burnley as well don't he they? Ge- they dress like burnley it's true he didn't generally handle it badly though i didn't think he got i mean he, had, he took one in the face but take it he did he didn't in like he didn't face. he didn't shirk away from the from antonio's massive arm though did he He just looked at it and went yep if, uh, if needs must i will go into this he's a great player isn't he he is Melier. very good as melier yeah well very, very let's good. get on to the positives then let's do the gitano barati hero of the week and um, there he is being nominated well we've uh got in the early nominations we've got a generic the kids uh, st petersburg whites uh white sorry says the kids and melier shackleton creswell um, assuming that we stay in this division, the future's bright. Absolutely fair point. Or um, we can get relegated and play them. Yeah. Win-win. We're, we're going to be playing them either way, aren't we? Uh, Cresswell gets an absolute... I mean, there's no point in even listing all the people who've, uh, who've nominated him. There's probably about 30 here on the sheet. Um, Angus K as well, Although, pushing, <laughs> pushing the agenda again. Let's give Daniel Barthorpe a mention who says... Uh, Charlie Creswell, it makes up somewhat for the fact that I hated his dad when he played for us, <laughs> based on little more than pretty much hating that whole Blackwell era minus Healy, Horse, and Derry. <laughs> so there's uh, the the redemption, uh, the son absolving the sins of the father. I do wonder how long it's going to be until Bielsa makes Creswell lose weight, because he's he's a big boy. He's just isn't made he? him put him all on. He's he's big, isn't he? Though compared to the rest of our players, now he'll be like, well, I said you had to go away and bulk up, but not like that. Just get look at Liam, look at Liam get more like Liam and everyone else is saying don't do that <laughs> yeah he was outstanding and from Creswell to Melier he gets loads of nominations for being fearless our octopus Graham describes him as arms everywhere long arms I mean there were some and genuine some genuine world he saves in there as well like there was that one I think in the first half where he just tipped it around the post there's the one on one as well so he did enough to keep us in the game when it was uh, proper end to end stuff and he's, he is brilliant you're you right I think one day he'll snap and headbutt Liam Cooper <laughs> tackle one of them come uh, on tackle tackle Kibar can't do everything he's brilliant so well when we've sold Calvin Phillips this summer and Rafinha next summer Melier the summer after well it's the big relief isn't it that Donnarumma went to Paris Saint-Germain because there was that little element of uh, Melier's agent starting to get involved and oh we think he might maybe he could go there no no let him stay at, at Leeds but he does seem to have that quality but then the only um the only hope but one hope <laughs> is that uh clubs tend to like older goalkeepers don't they so we'll we'll have him for the a few years at least that's exactly what i was saying just one one each year until he's matured <laughs> although often that's a case of experience isn't it because they say oh, they've not seen they've not played enough as much as they mm. look, might look good at youth football they've not got 100 games behind him or whatever but 
he will have money pretty soon. So I think it's Dave who does point out actually that we're worried about Rafa and uh, Phillips, but Melia will go for as much as anyone next summer. Yeah, and I was just had a look at how old um, Aaron Ramsdale is, and he's twenty three. So the, maybe the trend is going the other way now. With uh, they've also got um, what's his face at Scum, haven't they as well? Who Duke now with uh, what's his face, and he's quite young. <laughs> so maybe oh, brilliant uh, description. Maybe people are going for um, younger. Young, Dean Henderson, he, young at heart, isn't he? I mean, I didn't want to get into the whole Dean Henderson youth question. That's why I was avoiding all of that. But Melier is great. Michael Owen will tell you he was always destined to be. Uh, a number of nominations for players for a variety of things. Rafinha picks up a few for being good at football. Uh, we have Gelhart for his penalty against Fulham. It was Steve who picked that one up. Strauk for learning another position in the 23s. He went central midfield, didn't he? Number eight he was wearing. Yes, and he's played a uh, left back in the second half of that game and um, most of the Blackburn game he was left back as well. He took ages trying to take a throw in. That was quite nice. Yeah, I think he was um, confused being thrown back into the under 23s. He was just standing there with the ball waiting for somebody to make one of the first team runs and it wasn't happening and it took hours. Um, Shackleton gets a nomination by Andy for his week that he's had. We have Rodrigo as well. Dave picked out Rodrigo for being different class at times. Um, a drunk man in the East stand. Yeah, we're going back to the picking out the individual fans. Filamanjaro was well impressed by the bloke sat behind him in the uh, in the Upper East because he arrived stinking of booze and then sang, bellowed at the back of his head. I bet you could feel the warmth just <laughs> projecting out. <laughs> nice, uh, nice COVID safe feeling where you're thinking, <laughs> the back of my head is absolutely covered. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> uh, but after 95 minutes, uh, he was, an, it was annoyed at first, sorry, but after 95 minutes of already having lost his own voice, during the goal celebration, he had nothing but respect for him for still going all that time later. The lifeblood of our support. And it's true, isn't it? It's very, very true. I mean, Moscow, you've got some nominations. No idea why. Nathan yeah, and Thomas should be bringing me into this. They've, they've picked you out. Um, no. Well, yeah. Nathan... <laughs> I mean, Nathan does say that he didn't see the game and he hasn't been able to bring himself to watch it. But he basically likes the fact that you tell him some um, comforting lies after each game not well, his words exactly but, yes um, i don't want to get that's into, my interpretation uh, of it and a good it's an accurate one as well i don't want to get into me but let's quote nathan accurately never fails to make me feel better in the wake of games like that <laughs> so that's nice i'm glad that i can make people feel better that people one person person well it's one more than none <laughs> um, Holly Ann tweeted us to say that uh, her hero of the week nomination goes to whoever's responsible at Leeds United for signing off on the installation of toilet seats in the ladies after almost 18 years this was a pleasant and unexpected first at Ellen Road um, so wow. we have a happy peach this winter <laughs> I mean in the men's toilets I can't remember if this is still the case I think it might just be a bare metal like prison toilet rim now at, yeah. at some point in the east stand I'm sure they had little bits of wood just on the edges like a permanently attached bit yeah, of wood yeah, yeah. that obviously just was endlessly doused in piss so if anyone actually <laughs> wanted to sit on it it was not really an option um but i'm, I'm glad i'm glad would, that, would you women, would you sit women, down women, in an ellen road toilet women, we, i have i think i have done once when i was um poorly <laughs> <laughs> it, was not a, it was not a decision i took lightly though we spoke about it because like when you go out you know like we were saying i think it was about kids weren't we we were talking in the kitchen here at the office just saying that it's it's funny how kids can interrupt any day by just needing the toilet and as adults you just think well do you know what what i'll do is i'll, I'll save it and go on the throne at home rather than using toilets in like restaurants and yeah. pubs and bars whereas, and whereas kids will be like halfway through a yorkshire pudding and just go just off to the uh <laughs> just we're just off to go on out just uh do you want to come with me because like, oh, i on. mean i yeah i mean my lad sam he went to the toilet twice during the first half <laughs> against west ham just hoping and praying it was number ones um because i and i haven't doused him in sanitizer since but, but i must admit i'm surprised the women have not had toilet seats to yeah, this point it does like, seem it does seem quite poor well well if that, we don't get discussion, them why should they 18 years is a long time to be holding <laughs> anything in i wonder because there was um they, they recently filmed that fifa ratings video which had the wonderful clip of um calvin phillips shouting down a phone to whoever had done the fifa ratings going my ratings are a shambles just one of the most th that's why he can never leave because no other club will appreciate his his leads pronunciation of shambles that was filmed beneath the cop and i'm wondering if in the process of that one of the the film crew or the staff who production staff have come along to make that has attempted to piss 
<laughs> and has drawn it to the attention of the people there. Have you seen the state of it in there? And like, oh no, we haven't been in there for I'm, I'm, 18 pa- years. Pa- Patrick Bamford, maybe, because he was on that, that film, um, filming Scout, wasn't it? So maybe he's gone into the toilet and gone, oh my God, is this how they treat them? <laughs> and he's had a word. You'd hope he'd go in the gents, though. I, I mean, even in a, you know, the a gender neutral toilet world I don't think that really applies in the cop Pat Bamford should he should be able to tell the should difference should go for a sit down way elsewhere mm. yes yeah so not there uh, or Rand- maybe he was just checking because he's interested in and how the other world the other half lives so he's checking out every every inch of the women's toilets mm-hmm. um, and that's my explanation officer <laughs> <laughs> Rad Razani gets a nomination, got a balance of the universe the other way. Katie um, has nominated Andrea for the Afghanistan girls youth team. 112 of them to bring them to Leeds. Haven't they suffered enough, et cetera, et cetera, is the joke there. So well done. And um, and Angus Kinnear gets a nomination for his programme notes as well. So let's pick, pick a hero of the week out of all that lot. Is it Creswell? I think Creswell. I mean... Maybe does it? Oh, God. Melier, Tyler Roberts then. Go on. Melier the got the... Uh, <laughs> Melier got the... Uh, El Beau dans la bouche. Yeah. didn't he so it's is it's, El- elbow is that the translation and i think have we done this before where we've not given it to malier on the expectation that he's going to be nominated again next week and i feel like that may be it because if strike is back is creswell going to stay in he's certainly played well enough um but we know bielsa will go for his safer options so it could be that this is the only he's only going to have one premier league debut isn't he? let's give it creswell elbow now. is uh malier next week it's what? Could. 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 Sounds like a Geordie thing, like his Geordie accent he's 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 got a could. Coo- could in the bush. Reached the could. All right. Is it? It's it's uh, Creswell then, just because it's his debut. It's a sympathy vote then, is it? Yeah, go on. Right. <laughs> As opposed to a sympathy vote for Melier for getting a, an arm in the face. Uh, but no, he was, he was outstanding and the future does bode well. And it does mean that if there comes a time where we need to play him again further on in the season, that we know that we can rely on him. We don't we need to play him again against Watford. Never mind further in the season. He just why would you drop him though? In all honesty, because well, I personally probably would not. But Bielsa will see Stroke there and see he's got so many more Premier League games, and we'll put him back in. And then if your aunt Aocock happens to be available, then um, it's difficult. We've seen the pattern of lots of debuts, but not many players getting a a run. So unless you want to quickly go and like tug. Pascal strikes beard off so he's got a, a, a face injury and can't play. Tug it, <laughs> just yeah. rip it off. I'm glad you finished that <laughs> sentence like, like that because it could have come out a lot worse. Just tug, I don't know, tugging his beard off just yeah. sounds... Well, I don't know how else you him. It's, it's the most obvious thing to go for. Just your own fantasies. Uh, well done then, Cresswell. He had a good one. Um, and regardless of whether it's him or Strauch, hopefully we return next week and we'll finally be happy with this godforsaken season in this awful division. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Thanks for joining us on this one. We'll see you in a bit. The Square Ball Podcast.